Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'd like to talk about asthma treatments. And many patients do ask me whether asthma can be treated without inhalers. So this is what I'd like to cover in this video because I received this comment. So please doctor, I have a question. Can asthma be cured without inhalers? And obviously, I think this warrants a more comprehensive answer. And I'll try to do that in this video. So I have prepared some talking points that I'd like to cover all of these in this video. Slowly, slowly, if you have patience to, to listen to the end, I hope you will get some value out of this video. Now, first of all, I'd like to just say before I even begin is that please take medical advice from your own doctor only. Even if my video is fantastic, it may not apply in your case just because each patient is completely different. So if you're suffering from asthma, do talk to your doctor about what are the best, best strategies in your case to better manage your asthma. Now, that being said, I'd like to just start by <laughs> answering this question because it is a bit nuanced here. So are inhalers addictive? Now, many patients actually ask me that. So are you addicted to things like these once you start using them? And I would just counter by saying that, for example, if you think of another condition such as high blood pressure, many people are on treatment for high blood pressure. They take tablets every day for high blood pressure. Would you consider that that is an addiction? In the same way, if you have to take inhalers to control your asthma, to prevent attacks, would you consider that an addiction? And this is where I think you need to sort of ask this question to yourself. What do you think? Is this an addiction or is this an effective treatment? Because if you are taking inhalers and you are using them, I understand they can be bulky and I'll touch upon that in point number three. But if you are using these sort of treatments and your asthma is really well un under control, you can lead normal life, you can play sports, you can socialize, you can be with your friends, you can do all these things. Would that constitute an addiction or would it just be that the treatment is effective and allows you to have a normal life? So I think this is really important to just mention that at the beginning because I do get asked this quite a lot. The second thing I'd like to talk about is what is asthma? Because many patients actually do not understand what asthma really is. And I think it's really important to clarify. So many people, when they think about asthma, they only think about the attacks, the asthma attacks where you have these problems that occur relatively suddenly, your breathing uh, becomes very labored, you are, your chest is tight, you are wheezing, you are coughing maybe, you can't breathe, you may end up in the hospital. These are the attacks. This is what people think about when they think about the word asthma, they associate it with attacks only. But asthma actually is the condition that is before those attacks. It's the condition that leads to those attacks. So it's an inflammatory condition of the airways. So the airways in the lungs, as they branch off from the, the main um, airway, they sort of get smaller and smaller. At some point, they become small enough that they are only surrounded by muscle wall. They don't have cartilage around them. So they cannot stay open by themselves. They basically have these muscles that control the caliber of the airways. So they may become bigger or smaller depending on how much air you need to breathe in. So for example, if you're running, if you're um, doing something really strenuous, you probably will need the, your airways to be wider. So those muscles open up. Now, when you're not using them, they tend to close up again. So it's a way for your body to control how much air goes in and out of your lungs in order to have an effective breathing. Now, what happens in asthma is that at the inside of these airways, you do get a little bit of inflammation. Now, that inflammation is caused by potentially allergens, potentially a bit of genetic predisposition, the way your, our body reacts to different things. And we get this allergic inflammation in most cases, but it's not always allergic. But you get inflammation in the lining of these airways. And that sometimes leads to spasm of these muscles that actually triggers the asthma attack. Now, it's a little bit more complex than that, but this is the main problem, that you've got inflammation in the airways in your lungs. Now, if you've got inflammation there, of course, the muscles will be irritated. They will sometimes spasm. They, you'll have these asthma attacks. So you're trying to treat that inflammation, really, in asthma in order to prevent the attack. So that's the condition, asthma. It's more than just the attack itself. It's what leads up to this attack. So I think this is really, really important to understand. The third point I'd like to cover here is about this problem to, with inhaler use, because we do use these sort of inhalers, not only this one, it can be a number of them, to inhale medication deep within the airways, exactly where it's needed in order to control that inflammation. This is the most effective way to treat that inflammation, to inhale something 
directly where it's needed. Now, obviously, they are bulky. So there are some barriers to use. So I think that's really important to touch upon because some of the questions that I receive may be from people who live in societies where it's not really understandable, understood to use these things. You don't want to appear sick. And I think this is something that varies around the world. Perhaps in some societies, using asthma inhalers is very normal. It's something that many people use and it's not frowned upon. But depending on where you go in the world, there may be social barriers to using inhalers. And I've had patients, for example, from certain uh, population group as, that have mentioned this to me, that if they go to their village, for example, they cannot be seen as sick because people will not appreciate that. So it's a lot of work that we, I think, need to put in to raise awareness about the prospect of asthma and respiratory disease and that this can be treated with inhalers and other medications such as such as these which may not look very nice but they are, would actually allow those people to be integral parts of their societies there's also like psychological barriers as well so if you think about it if you're a teenager and you have to go to school you may be bullied if you're using inhalers if you're you know always carrying your inhaler around. And I think that's something that many people may struggle to deal with because you, they're also dealing with their asthma attacks, with their asthma treatments, and they want to be with their friends. And then it's difficult. And I can understand that. But it's important to understand that this condition may be there for the long run, for many years. So in that case, actually having that inhaler, using it, may allow you to be more part of your social group than being too sick to be part of it. So it's a very, very complex balance that needs to be struck there. But I think we just need to work harder on basically raising awareness that actually asthma exists. It's a very common condition. Hundreds of millions of people suffer with asthma around the world. And if we do a better job at explaining that, hopefully treatments such as inhalers will be better accepted. Now, the fourth point that I'd like to discuss is this one that inhalers in asthma have a dual role so why do i mean that in most inhalers that we use for asthma we use combination medication so this is one of these inhalers for example i don't have others around but there are different types of combination inhalers and what they generally contain is two medications obviously so one medication that controls the inflammation in the airway so that's a corticosteroid and another inhaled medication that opens up the airways and keeps them keeps those muscles relaxed and open so that the airways have the biggest caliber possible and the inflammation within them is treated. So once we inhale that combination medication to directly in the airways, we treat the inflammation, but we also breathe better. So most inhalers that have to be taken long term, so daily, once a day, twice a day for the long run, they do that they control the inflammation and they also help you breathe better the fifth point so treating airway inflammation prevents asthma attacks so this is what i mean by that inhaled corticosteroid so usually that inhaled medication that you use through the inhaler goes directly where it's needed controls the inflammation in the airways and reduces the chance of asthma attacks so obviously if we treat that inflammation with an inhaler we will control the asthma in the long run. So I think that's a very, very important point to understand. The asthma inhaler is not there only for the attacks. You are using that medication as a controller daily, and that prevents the attack from happening in the first place. So I think that's really important to understand. The sixth point that I'd like to, to mention here is that inhalers are safer than tablets or injections. What do I mean by that? There are different types of asthma treatment. So you can have, for example, steroid corticosteroids, which are anti-inflammatory drugs that you can take as tablets. But the dose that you would need to be taking in a tablet in order for it to be effective in the lungs, it's orders of magnitude greater than what you would inhale in one of these devices. These contain very little medication. Every time you inhale the drug from an inhaler to treat your asthma, the dose is so small that it barely gets absorbed in the rest of the body. So that makes them very, very safe because it's like a local topical treatment. Imagine if you're putting an ointment on your skin, it's very little. 
It doesn't really, you wouldn't expect that to affect your liver or your kidneys, and it doesn't. So in the case of inhalers, it's the same. You're inhaling something that goes only in the airway on the inner lining of the airway where the condition really happens, and that controls the disease. And it doesn't really get absorbed unless you abuse these and take many, many, many puffs, you know, tens of puffs a day, you'll probably not feel an effect in the rest of your body if you're using an inhaler correctly. So I think that's very important. If you think of a tablet or an injectable medication, these need to be dissolved in all the tissues of the body, travel to the bloodstream, that medication needs to go all around, bathe all the organs of the body until it reaches the lungs and the lining of the airways, which is actually on the outermost part. So you're trying to treat something from within going to the airway as compared to just treating the airway that's in contact with what we're breathing in. So I think that's really, really important to understand. Now, this uh, other point is related to desensitization therapy, because some patients do hope that this will be a cure. And it does work. For example, in certain cases of allergic asthma, you can have somewhat of a cure. The only problem is it doesn't work in most cases. Uh, desensitization therapy, for those of you who don't know what that is, is basically something where we are allergic, for example, to dust, to house dust mites, which are found basically in the dust around the house. And if we're allergic to that, every time we clean up our room, we inhale some dust, we may get an asthma attack. Now, what happens in des desensitization therapy is because we are, know we're allergic to something specific, we can be gradually exposed to increasing doses of that allergen. And by doing that, our body will react slightly every time we get exposed to that allergen, but over time it will build up a tolerance. So that's desensitization. So increasing sort of levels of our allergen done in a safe manner under the supervision of your doctor potentially in order to um, reduce the risk of asthma attacks due to that allergen and that can work as a potential cure unfortunately it only works in a few cases so you need to really have a known allergen that you can practice safe desensitization with usually this is done in collaboration with your lung doctor or your allergist but it can work but unfortunately it's only limited to a few cases so it doesn't really work for everyone and then the final point that i like to to make is that this is a bit of an encouragement because inhalers really work in asthma. So most guidelines that you will read about, if you can find the doctor guidelines if you want to read about it. So one uh, such guideline is called GINA asthma. So you can read this. So this is G-I-N-A. So if you find this uh, guideline online, you will see that most treatment recommendations for most cases of asthma are inhalers, inhaled medication, for the points that I've mentioned above, that they are safer than tablets or injections, and it's fairly easy to use these. If you use them correctly, they are safe. I understand the psychological and social implications, but if the guidelines mention this, it's because most of the research points to the safe use of inhalers, effective use in the majority, in the vast majority of cases, you don't need anything else to treat your asthma. You just need to take inhalers correctly. And you have controller inhalers and reliever inhalers. So controller inhalers are basically the inhalers that you take regularly in order to control the inflammation, which is exactly the condition of asthma. And then you only use relievers or attack inhalers basically when you get an asthma attack and that's when you use something like a blue inhaler a ventolin something like that but that should be exceptional so that should not be the rule if you are having to use your reliever inhaler daily it's probably the case that your asthma is not well controlled but basically in this video i'd like i wanted to just touch upon why we need inhalers to treat asthma and i hope that was helpful to you to understand it better if i touch upon these points and put it into a wider context unfortunately we don't have a good cure for asthma not yet at least but people are working on that so hopefully as time goes on we will have better and better treatments for the, for the time being we are stuck with such inhalers which may not be as acceptable as taking a tablet discreetly somewhere, but I think they work very, very well. And it's better to have a condition that is well under control, a well-controlled asthma, rather than struggling with your breathing every day. So I think that should be the priority. And 
because they are safe, there's not a problem in taking them long term, as long as you use them correctly. Now, if you want to see how to use inhalers, basically if you're struggling with inhaler techniques, I have further videos on my channel about that. There are many such resources online, but also do ask any questions that come to mind because I'll try to answer them in future videos. Always go see your doctor regularly if you have asthma. I've said this in previous videos. I think it's really important to have at least a yearly checkup for your asthma. If you have that, you'll probably be in the best position to have the most appropriate treatment for you. And believe me, as doctors, as a doctor, as a pulmonologist myself, I always aim to provide minimal medication. So the minimal medication that controls your asthma is probably right. But that can only be um, decided by regularly seeing your doctor. And it's important to know that it's a chronic condition. It doesn't really go away for uh, completely. It may have periods when it's better, periods when it's a little bit worse, but I think you may always need a little bit of an asthma treatment. And that's just how it is, unfortunately. I wish you didn't get asthma if you are suffering with asthma, but if you have, at least it's important to acknowledge that the condition is there and to take the right steps to treat it correctly so that you can do everything that you want to do. I hope this video was helpful for you and thank you for watching and all the best. Good health.